Good day everyone, I'm Gwen Bimalbas from BEC 2 p and for today's reporting, we're going to talk all about basketball. This is for the subject PE4, Team Sports or Games, February 2, 2021 and we are the first group. For today's topic, we have first, basketball in its history to be reported by me, second, growth of the game, U.S. High School and College Basketball to be reported by Ray Sarmintilia and U.S. Professional Basketball to be reported by Rian Bernante. Third, we have Basketball's Further Development, U.S. Women's Basketball to be reported by Janbert Boniel and International Competition to be reported by Ray Isaac Jr. Fourth, we have The Game's Rules to be reported by Roger Gaviola. And lastly, we have court and equipment to be reported by Justin Bassa and Alfred Aniades. Now let's begin. First, we have basketball and its history. So basketball is a game played between two teams of five players each on a rectangular court, usually indoors. Each team tries to score by tossing the ball through the opponent's goal an elevated horizontal hoop, and a net called a basket. So, the only major sport strictly of U.S. origin, basketball was invented by James Naismith on or about December 1, 1891 at the International Young Men's Christian Association or YMCA Training School, now Springfield College at Springfield, Massachusetts, where Naismith was an instructor in physical education. For that first game of basketball in 1891, Naismith used as goals two half bushel pitch baskets, which gave the sport its name. Because of this, his students were very enthusiastic. After much running and shooting, William R. Chase made a midcourt shot, the only score in that historic contest. So, as we can see here in the first picture, this is James Naismith holding a ball and a pitch basket which were the first basketball equipment. Now, in the second picture, here is an example of a mid-court or what we commonly know as a half-court shot, which William R. Chase made in that first basketball game. While basketball is competitively a winter sport, it is played on a 12-month basis on summer playgrounds in municipal, industrial, and church halls in schoolyards and family driveways and in summer camps, often on an informal basis between two or more contestants. Many grammar schools, youth groups, municipal recreation centers, churches, and other organizations conduct basketball programs for youngsters of less than high school age. So in the early years of basketball, the number of players on a team varied according to the number in the class and the size of the playing area. By 1894, teams began to play with five on a side when the playing area was less than 1,800 square feet. The number rose to seven when the playing area measured from 1,800 to 3,600 square feet and up to nine when the playing area exceeded that. But by 1895, the number was occasionally set at 5 by mutual consent. The rule stipulated 5 players 2 years later, and this number has remained ever since. So, since Naismith and 5 of his original players, who played in that first ever game of basketball in 1891, were Canadians, it is not surprising that Canada was the first country outside the United States to play the game. After this, basketball was introduced in France in 1893, in England in 1894, in Australia, China, and India soon thereafter, and in Japan in 1900. So here we can see in the picture, players shooting into a closed bottom pitch basket in an outdoor game of basketball in 1892. Basketball helped swell the membership of YMCA students because of the availability of their gyms. However, within five years, 
the game was outlawed by various associations because gyms that had been occupied by classes of 50 or 60 members were now monopolized or reduced by only 10 to 18 players. So, the banishment of the game for this reason induced many members to terminate their YMCA membership and to hire hosts or any place such as gymnasiums, thus paving the way to the professionalization of the sport. Originally, players wore one of the three styles of uniforms. We have knee-length football trousers, jersey tights as commonly worn by wrestlers, or short padded pants, forerunners of today's uniforms, plus their knee guards. The courts often were of irregular shape with occasional obstructions such as pillars, stairways, or offices that interfered with play. In 1903, it was ruled that all boundary lines must be straight. Nets open at the bottom were adapted in 1912 to 13. In 1895 to 1896, the points for making a basket, a goal, or a field goal, or what we commonly know as a shot, were reduced from 3 to 2, and the points for making a free throw after committing a foul were also reduced from 3 to 1. So here, in the first picture, we can see players practicing for their game in the late 80s. And for the second picture, we have players wearing their uniforms, their upper sando jerseys, paired with knee-length football trousers and also knee-length socks with their shoes. In the past, baskets were frequently attached to balconies, making it easy for spectators behind a basket to lean over the railings and deflect the ball to favor one side and hinder the other. In 1895, teams were urged to provide a 4 by 6 foot or 1.2 by 1.8 meter screen for the purpose of eliminating interference. Soon after, wooden backboards proved more suitable. Glass backboards were legalized by the professionals in 1908 to 1909 and by colleges in 1909 to 1910. In 1920 to 1921, the backboards were moved 2 feet or 0 0.6 meter and in 1939 to 1940, 4 feet in from the end lines to reduce frequent stepping out of bounds. For the first two years, ang gamit pa na bola sa mga players is a soccer ball or a football. It is in 1894 that the first basketball was marketed. It was laced, measured close to 32 inches or 81 centimeter or about 4 inches or 10 centimeter larger than the soccer ball in circumference and weighed less than 20 ounces or 567 grams. By 1948 to 1949, when the laceless molded ball was made official, the size had been set at 30 inches or 76 centimeter. So here in the first picture, we can see the laceless, the laced ball, I mean. And for the second picture, we have here, wa na si Jaytahe, instead it is a molded basketball. So the first college to play basketball game was either Geneva College at Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania or the University of Iowa. C.O. Bemis heard about the new sport at Springfield and tried it out with his students at Geneva in 1892. Meanwhile, at Iowa, H.F. Kallenberg, who had attended Springfield in 1890, wrote to Nismith for a copy of the rules and he also presented the game of basketball to his students. The first college basketball game with five on a side was played between the University of Chicago and the University of Iowa in Iowa City on January 18, 1896. The University of Chicago won with a score of 15 to 12 with neither team using a substitute. H.F. Kallenberg was the one who refereed that game, a common practice in that era. After various games took play, the colleges formed their own rules committee in 1905 
and by 1913, there were at least five sets of rules. Kalidjet, YMCA Amateur Athletic Union, those used by state militia groups, and two varieties of professional rules. Teams often agreed to play under a different set of players for each half of a game. To establish some measure of uniformity, the colleges, Amateur Athletic Union, and YMCA formed the Joint Rules Committee in 1915. This group was renamed the National Basketball Committee or NBC of the United States and Canada in 1936 and until 1979 served as the game's sole amateur rule-making body. However, in that same year, the colleges broke away para makakreate sila sa ilang own rules committee and also during that same year, the National Federation of State High School Associations likewise assumed the task of establishing or making their own separate playing rules for the high schools. The National Collegiate Athletic Association or NCAA Rules Committee for Men is a 12-member board representing all three NCAA divisions. It has six members from Division I schools and three each from Divisions two and three. It has jurisdiction over colleges, junior colleges, the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics or NAIA and Armed Forces Basketball. There is also a similar body for women's play. After some time, Basketball then grew steadily but slowly in popularity and importance in the United States and internationally in the first three decades after World War II. Interest in the game deepened as a result of television exposure but mostly because kay na imbento na ang cable television, especially during the year 1980, the game's popularity exploded at all levels. So, naani si Ja ang mga players na naabtan and nailhan sa ato mga parents in which they shared to us, mao ni sila Irvin Magic Johnson, Julius Irving, we have Larry Bird from Boston Celtics, and Michael Jordan, of course, from Chicago Bulls. And the greatly increased exposure, basketball moved quickly to the forefront of the American sporting scene alongside such traditional leaders as baseball and football. So, mo na ni Karon, nga resulta, na usa sa pinakasikat na games in the whole world is basketball, especially NBA. Four areas of the game developed during this period. We have U.S. high school and college basketball, professional basketball, we have also women's basketball, and international basketball. For a quick snippet, here is Irvin Magic Johnson from the Lakers driving for a layup and Larry Bird from the Boston Celtics attempting to block the shot. Now, for the next part of the report, we have growth of the game to be reported by Raisa Rimentilia and Rian Bernante. So, hello everyone. I will report about the history of the U.S. high school and college basketball. So, for my report, uh, most of the things that I will say will also be um, present here in the presentation. So, mabasa ra po din jo so that dali ra mo maka-follow through sa ahong mga explanations. So, let's proceed with our um, discussion. So, basketball at the high school and college levels developed from a structured, rigid game in the early days to one that is often fast-paced and high-scoring. Individual skills improved markedly, and although basketball continued to be regarded as the ultimate team game, individualistic one-on-one -on -one performers came to be not only accepted, but used and as an effective means of winning games. So, in the early years of the game, um, the maximum point na ila jung makuha kay 30 ra. And that is because once one team acquired um, a lead against the other, ang ilang buhaton is ila na lamang hot dun ilang oras by passing the ball to each teammates and um, just waiting for their time to run out. So, 
because of that uh, a change in the rule must be made so here is the first change now in 1932 to 33 a line was drawn at midcourt and the offensive team was required to advance the ball past it within 10 seconds or um, they will lose the possession sa bola. And five years later, in year 1937 to 38, the center jump following each field goal or free throw was eliminated. Instead, the defending team was permitted to inbound the ball from the out of bound line underneath the basket. And decades passed before another alteration of like magnitude was made in the college game. After experimentation, the NCAA Rules Committee installed a 45-second shot clock in 1985 that was reduced to 35 seconds in the year 1993, restricting the time a team could control the ball before shooting. One year later, it implemented a three-point shot rule for baskets made beyond a distance of six meters. And in 2008, the three-point line was moved to 6.3 meters from the basket. So, more noticeable alteration came in the game at both the playing and coaching levels. An example is Stanford University's Hank Luisetti was the first to use and popularize the one-hand shot in the late 1930s. 1950s and 60s, a shooting style evolved from Luisetti's push-off one-hander to a jump shot which is released at the top of the jump. West Virginia University guard Jerry West and Purdue University's Rick Mount were two players who demonstrated the devastating effectiveness of the shot. So, in defensive coaching, philosophy similarly has undergone change. An example was Frank W. Keeney, coach at the University of Rhode Island from 1921 to 1948, is credited with introducing the concept of fast break basketball in which the offensive team rushes the ball up court hoping to get a good shot before the defense can get set another man who contributed to a quicker pace of play particularly through the use of the pressure defense was adolf rupp Pioneer coaches such as Henry Iba of Oklahoma A&M University that is now Oklahoma State University or Long Island University's Claire B taught strictly a man-to-man -man defense, the zone defense developed by Cam Henderson of Marshall University in West Virginia later became an integral part of the game. Over the years, one of the rule makers' chief concern was to neutralize the advantage of taller players. At 6 feet 5 inches, Joe Lapchick was considered very tall when he played for the original Celtics in 1920s, but as even taller players appeared, rules were changed in response. To prevent tall players from stationing themselves near the basket, a rule was instituted in 1932 to 1933, prohibiting the player with the ball from standing inside the foul line with his back to the basket for more than three seconds. The three-second rule later applied to any attacking player in the foul lane. In 1937 to 1938, a new rule forbade any player from touching the ball when it was in the basket or on its rim, which is called the basket interference, and in 1944 to 1945, it became illegal for any defending player to touch the ball on its downward flight towards the basket or goal tending. But nevertheless, with each passing decade, the team with the tallest players tended to dominate. Lou Alcindor, later Karim Abdul-Jabbar, 7 feet and 1 inch, is one to most influence the rules. After his sophomore year at the University of California at Los Angeles, the dunk shot was banned from collegiate basketball, presumably because the rules committee felt again that the big men had too great an advantage. The rule was withdrawn beginning with the 1976 to 1977 season and the dunk shot became an important part of the game, electrifying both fans and players. 
Small and medium-sized players also affected the game's development. Bob Cousy, playing at Holy Cross College and later for the Boston Celtics, was regarded as one of the game's first great playmakers. He was among the first to use the behind-the-back pass and between the legs dribble as effective offensive maneuvers. Magic Johnson, the point guard who led Michigan State University to a championship in 1979 and the Los Angeles Lakers to several NBA championships, Oscar Robertson, a dominating performer for the University of Cincinnati in the late 1950s and for the Milwaukee Bucks in 1970s. Larry Bird of Indiana State University, a forward of exceptional versatility who led the Boston Celtics to several championships, and Michael Jordan, a great all-around player with the University of North Carolina in 1980s, who is widely considered the best professional player in the history of sport. Nothing influenced the college game's growth more than television. However, the NCAA championship games were televised nationally from 1963. And by the 1980s, all three major television networks were telecasting intersectional college games during the November to March season. Rights fee for this game soared from a few million dollars to well over $50 million by the late 1980s. For broadcasting the NCAA Finals, a television contract that began in 2003 gave the NCAA an average of $545 million per year for the television rights. Profits such as this inevitably attracts gamblers, and in the evolution of college basketball, the darkest hours have been related to gambling scandals. But as the game began to draw more attention and generate more income, the pressure to win intensified, resulting in an outbreak of rules of violation, especially with regards to recruitment of star players. And the most identifiable phase of college basketball in America is the postseason tournament held in March, which is popularly known as March Madness. The first basketball tournament was staged by the Amateur Athletic Union in 1897 and was won by New York City's 23rd Street YMCA, later to become a traveling professional team known as the New York Wanderers. Although the YMCA was prominently identified with the game in its early years, it did not hold its first national tournament until 1923, and that event took place until 1962. The first national tournament for colleges was held in 1937 and was conducted by an organization in Kansas City, Missouri, that later became the NAIA. New York City basketball writers organized the first national invitation tournament, or NIT, in 1938. But a year later, the New York City colleges took control of the event. Until the early 1950s, the NIT was considered the most prestigious American tournament, but with the growth of the college-run NCAA championship, the NIT became a consolation event for teams that failed to make the NCAA selections. So, the first NCAA tournament was played in 1939, and its growth took place in three stages. So the first era ran through 1964 when it was essentially a tournament for champions of various conferences. There were just eight teams in the 1939 field, and by 1963, it had been expanded to 25 teams, all champions of their respective conferences, plus several successful independent teams. The outstanding teams of the 1940s and 50s participated in both the NCAA and NIT tournaments, but after the gambling scandals that followed the 1950 NIT cha- championship, a rule was passed prohibiting a team from playing in both. Afterwards, the NCAA tournament progressively outgrew the NIT. In 1964, the second era dawned as the UCLA Bruins, coached by John Wooden, became a period of domination over the NCAA fields. From the season until 1975, Wooden led his team to 10 NCAA championships. Only championships won by Texas Western University, that is now University of Texas at El Paso, in 1966, and North Carolina State's 
1974 interrupted UCLA's reign. In the eyes of many, the UCLA's dynastic period probably had a regressive effect on the game's growth, a sport with such high predictability lost some of its attractiveness. Let's proceed to the third growth stage came with the end of UCLA's dominance. Champions began to emerge from all sections of the country. From the field of 25 in 1974, the NCAA's tournament expanded to 64 participants in 1985, to 65 in 2001, and to 68 now in 2011. Corresponding play-in games were added in 2001 and 2011, including not only conference championship teams but other outstanding teams from the same conferences as well. Three weeks of play culminate with the final four weekends, an event now comparable in general public interest and media attention to the Super Bowl and World Series. Championships at the Division Two and Division Three, and NAIA levels also continued to grow in interest, reaping some of the fallout from the popularity of Division One. And right now, about 17,000 high schools in the United States have basketball teams, and all 50 states conduct statewide tournaments annually. So that's it for my report guys. Thank you for listening and I really do hope that you learned a lot. U.S. Professional Basketball In the Middle Atlantic, and New England state, it is where the professional game first prospered. So there are two first great professional clubs. These are the Trenton, New Jersey, and the New York Wanderers. Edward and Lou Watcher, Jimmy Williamson, Jack Inglis, and Bill Hardman, they are a group of basketball stylists who never received the acclaim they deserve. It's because in their heyday, they played various towns or they played so many um, different places. That's why they never received their acclaim, which was they introduced the bounce pass and long pass as offensive weapons and championed the rule that made each player, when fouled, shoot his own free throw. Before the World War II, the most widely heralded professional team was the original Celtics. So, uh, original Celtics, which started out in 1915 as a group of youngsters in New York City, they keep adding better players in the early 1920s and became so invincible that the team disbanded in 1928 but only to regroup in early 19 1930s from original Celtics they changed their name into New York Celtics the first professional league was the National Basketball League or NBL, so it was formed in the year 1898. So its game differed from the college game in that a chicken wired, a chicken wire cage, typically surrounded the court, separating the players from other hostile fans. Sadly, despite the lively action of the NBL and other leagues were short-lived or didn't last long it's because um because of frequent movement of players who sold their services on a per game basis and some players performing for several cities or clubs within the same season 
the league suffer games of unreliable quality and many financially unstable franchises. That's why the NBL and other leagues um, didn't last long. Until the Great Depression of 1930s um, truly hurtful for, for this professional basketball, I mean, this was their uh, great, great dilemma at that time, the Great Depression, because in the western part of the world, the economy um, went down, and which affects the professional um, basketball. But a new NBL was organized in later 1937 in around the Upper Midwest. So, in the year 1946, under the guidance of Walter A. Brown, a new organization flourished, which is the Basketball Association of America, or BAA. So, Brown stated that professional basketball would succeed only if there were sufficient financial support to nurse the league over the lean years. And he added that the game emphasizes skill instead of brawling, and if all players were restricted to contracts with a reserve rule protecting each team from raiding by another club. Following a costly two-year feud, the BAA and the NBL emerged in the year 1949 to form the National Basketball Association, which is now very famous. And I think all of us know uh, about this NBA, so National Basketball Association. So it was for a merge of BAA and NBL. So the rule of the game changes in the 1954-55 to season. So first rule was a team must shoot for a basket within 24 seconds after acquiring possession of the ball. Second, bonus free throw is awarded to a player any time the opposing teams commit more than six, later five, now four personal fouls in a quarter or more than two personal fouls in an overtime period. Third and last, two free throws are granted for any backcourt um, foul. So, after a struggle to, sur- to survive, um, including some large financial losses and several short-lived franchises, The NBA took its place as the major professional basketball league in the United States. So the NBA grew increasingly popular through the 1980s. Attendance records were broke in that decade by most of the franchises. A growth pattern stimulated at least in part by the increased coverage by cable television. And now the NBA has a total of 30 teams organized into Eastern and Western conferences and further divide into six divisions. So here are the six divisions or the 30 teams handled by NBA. So in the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic Division comprises the Boston Celtics, the Brooklyn Nets, the New York Knicks, the Philadelphia, and the Toronto Raptors. And the Central Division is made up of Chicago Bulls, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Detroit Pistons, the Indiana Pacers, and Milwaukee Bucks. The South East Division comprises Atlanta Hawks, Charlotte Hornets, the Miami Heat, the Orlando Magic, and the Washington Wizards. And in the Western Conference, the South East Division comprises Texas-based Dallas Mavericks, Houston Rockets, and San, Je- San Antonio Sports, and Ma- Memphis Grizz- Grizzlies, and the New Orleans Pelicans. The Northwest Division is made up of Denver Nuggets, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Oklahoma City Thunder, the Portland Trail Blazers, and the Utah Jazz. 
And the Pacific Division, and I think this is the last division, comprises Phoenix Suns and the California-based Golden State Warriors, Los Angeles Clippers, Los Angeles Lakers, and Sacramento Kings. Although basketball is traditionally a winter game, the NBA still fills its arenas and attracts the national television's audience in late spring and early summer. As the popularity of the league grew, players' salaries rose to an annual average of more than $5 million by mid-2000s, and some superstars earn more than $20 million yearly. But behind all the success of the NBA, um, they passes through a lot of challenges before committing this success. So that would be all. Thank you. Good day everyone. I am Janbert Bunyal and I am here to report about the U.S. Women's Basketball. U.S. Women's Basketball Clara Bear, who introduced basketball at the H. Soapy Newcomb College for women in New Orleans, influenced the women's style of play with her set of women's rules, published in 1895. On receiving a diagram of the court from Naismith, Bear mistook dotted lines, indicating the areas in which players might, might best execute team play, to be restraining lines, with the result that the forwards, centers, and guards were confined to the specified areas. This seemed appropriate because many felt that the men's game was too strenuous for women. America's first professional basketball league for women was founded in 1978 as the Women's Basketball League. The WBL competed, competed for three seasons, launching in 1979 with eight teams. The league expanded to 14 teams in 1980. So who is Clara Grigori Bear? She was an American physical education instructor and women's sports pioneer. Bear introduced the first teacher certification course for physical education in the southern United States and authored the first published rules of women's basketball. She was also the one who developed the sport of newcomb ball and played a role in the early development of netball. It was in 1893 that the basketball was introduced at Newcomb and into the South. At that time, the game had not reached its present development. When Newcomb College first tried basketball in its gymnastic work, there were no published rules for women, none of the fine points of control that characterize the game today. The results were naturally to be expected. Its introduction at Newcomb was not entirely satisfactory. Later, a compromise was reached by more four girls. So, women's rules over the years frequently have been modified. Until 1971, there were six players on a team, and the court was so divided that the three forwards played in the front court and did all the scoring while the three guards covered the back court. Senda Berenson staged the first women's college basketball game in 1893 when her freshmen and sophomore Smith College women played against one another. In April 1895, the women of the University of California, Berkeley, played Stanford University. Despite a multitude of hindrances such as being thought unladylike, women's basketball gradually secured a foothold. In 1971, when women's rules were changed to reduce the number on a team from six players to five and women were freed from the limits imposed by the half-court game, the level of individual skills and competition quickly rose. So, over the years, the rules and equipment used in the game were changed from the basketball size, court dimensions, shot clock, and even game clock. Intercollegiate Athletics for Women or AIAW in the early 1980s, control of the women's college game was shifted from the Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women, or AIAW, to the NCAA, a move that not only streamlined the operation and made it more efficient, but also added to the visibility of women's basketball. The Women's NCAA Championship Tournament runs co concurrently, concurrently with the men's, and many of the games are nationally televised. 
women's basketball became an Olympic sport in 1976. So, individual women's stars have been heavily recruited by colleges, but the players frequently found that there was no opportunity for them to play beyond the college level. Leagues were occasionally formed, such as Women's Professional Basketball League or the WPBL, begun in 1978. The WB the WPBL lasted on only three years. Eventually, filling the filing the void was the Women's National Basketball Association or WNBA, aligned with the powerful NBA. The WNBA held an inaugural season in 1997 with eight teams. By 2006, the WNBA had grown to 14 teams. Though following the season, the Charlotte Sting disbanded, and in 2008, the WNBA's inaugural champion, the Houston Comets, also folded. Sacramento Monarchs disbanded in 2009. The Eastern Conference consists of the Atlanta Dream, Chicago Sky, Connecticut Sun, Indiana Fever, New York Liberty, and Washington Mystics. The Western Conference comprises the Los Angeles Sparks, Minnesota Lynx, Phoenix Mercury, San Antonio Silver Stars, Seattle Storm, and Tulsa Shock. Women's professional basketball is played during the summer months. So, the international competition. The success of international basketball was greatly advanced by Forrest C., or known as Pog Allen, a nice mate discipline and a former coach at the University of Kansas, who led the movement for the inclusion of basketball in Olympic Games in 1936 and thereafter. Basketball has also been played in the Pan-American Games since their inauguration in 1951. The international game is governed by the Federation International de Basketball Amateur or the FIBA. World Championships began in 1950 for men and in 1953 for women. The men's tournament was renamed the FIBA Basketball World Cup in 2004. Under international rules, the court differs in that there is no front court or back court and the free throws lanes form a modified wedge shape there are some differences in rules including those governing substitutions technical and personal fouls free throws intermissions and timeouts outside the united states there are few places that strictly separate amateur from professional athletes so from the year 1890, 1881 to 1890 the formation of the association for the advancement of physical education was formed and up to the present, from year 2011 to 2020, it takes pl places in basketball championships title. So there is an international competition. The success of international basketball was greatly advanced by Forrest C. Pog Allen. Mon Usa si a Naismith disciple and a former coach at the University of Kansas who led the movement for the inclusion of basketball in the Olympic Games in 1936 and thereafter. So, basketball pod has been also been played in the Pan-American Games since their inauguration in 1951. The international game is governed by the Federation International de Basketball Amateur or as we call FIBA. The World Championships began in 1950 for men and for women 1953. The under international rules of the court differs in that there is no front court or back court and the free throw lanes from the from a modified wedge shape. The, there are some differences in rules, including those governing substitution, technical and personal fouls, free throws, intermissions, and timeouts. So, there is the a play of the game, court and equipment. So, uh, the standard American basketball court is in the shape of a rectangle, 50 feet by 94 feet, or 15.2 meters by 28.7 meters. High school courts may be slightly smaller. There are various markings on the court including a center circle, free throw lanes, and a three-point line that helps regulate play. A goal or basket 18 inches or 46 centimeter in diameter is suspended from a backboard at each end of the court. The metal rim of the basket is 10 feet 
or 3 meters above the floor. In the professional game, the backboard is a rectangle 6 feet or 1.8 meters wide and 3 point feet or 1.1 meters high made of transparent material, usually glass. It may be 4 feet or 1.2 meters high in college. The international court varies somewhat in size and markings. The spherical inflated ball measures 28.5 to 30 inches or 74.9 to 76 centimeter in circumference and weights 20 to 22 ounce or 5 567 to 624 grams. Its covering is leather or composition. So, dere ra to bang report. Thank you. Rules of basketball. The rules governing play of the game are based on Naismith's five principles. Requires a job of large, light ball, handled with the hands, no running with the ball, no player being restricted from getting the ball when it is in play, no personal contact, horizontal, elevated goal. The rules are spelled out in specific detail by the governing bodies of the several branches of the sport and covering the playing court and equipment, officials, players, scoring, and timing, fouls, violations, and other matters. Blocking. Any illegal personal contact that impedes the progress of an opponent who does not have the ball. Ogma palakan. Held ball. Called when two opponents have one or two hands so firmly upon the ball that either gain possession without undue roughness. It also is called when a player in the front court is so closely guarded that he cannot pass or try for a goal or is obviously with holding the ball from play. Jump ball. A method of putting the ball into play. Mona referee, it's sa ni jang bola. Ja ilogon sa duha ka players to tap para sa jan teammate. The jump ball is used to begin games and in the professional game when the ball is possessed by two opposing players at the same time. Dribble. Dapat ni mo dribble ang bola. Ball movement by bouncing the ball. A dribble ends when a player touches the ball with both hands simultaneously Continuously or does not continue his dribble. So, maundang ang dribble o gijan ang magunitan ang bola sa ijang duha kakamot. Passing. Naay mga main types ang passing. Kinaunhan is ang chest pass. Nga ang bola is released from a position in front of the chest. Kaduha is bounce pass in which the ball is bounced on the floor dapat i <coughs> inigpasa ni ja i just ang ipa igo sa floor o sa ma dawat sa ijang kauban roll pass on the floor the sunod is hook pass side or overhead and ang last is the baseball pass kanang ipasa ni ja sa ladyo nga distance with one hand in a manner similar to a baseball throw. Screen or pick. Legal action of a player who, without causing more than incidental contact, delays or prevents an opponent from reaching his desired position. Rebounding. <coughs> Rebound ka nang inigitsa na di masyat. Imong nagilugay mo sa sa ibabaw sa akoan. On a rebounding, both teams attempting to gain possession of the ball after any try for a basket that, has, that is unsuccessful, but the ball does not go out of bounds and remains in play. Pivot, a movement in which player with a ball steps once or more in any direction with the same foot while the other foot, pivot foot, is kept at its point of contact with the floor. So, dapat ang imong osakatiil, pivot foot, di maglihok di maglihok or else ma travel ka shots from the field one of the main field shots is the layup so kanang layup nga i totok sa ring ini 
It's uh, in which the shooter, while close to the basket, jumps and lays the ball against the backboard. So it will rebound into the basket or just lay it over the rim. Away from the basket, player use one hand push shot from a stride, jump or standing position, and a hook shot which is overhead. Some players can dunk, or dunk sila, jamming the ball into the basket. Traveling. So, matong giingon nga, o kami mong pivot foot, magsiglihok, matawag po to siya travel. Progressing in any direction in excess of the prescribed limits, normally two steps while holding the ball. So, two steps sa juna si Jack, kayo mulapas na Jack, two steps, travel na itawag. Turnover. So, katong traveling, usa to siya sa matawag na turnover. Loss of possession of the ball by a team through error or a rule violation. Court and equipment by Justin Obasa. Court. A standard American basketball court is in the shape of a rectangle 50 feet or 15.2 meters by 94 feet or 28.7 meters. High school courts may be slightly smaller there are various mark markings on the court, including a center circle, a free throw line, and the three-point line that help regulate play. Backboard. In the professional game, the backboard is a rectangular, six feet wide and 3.5 feet high made of a transparent material, usually glass. It may be four feet, high in college ball the spherical inflated ball measures 29.5 to 30 inches in circumference and weighs 20 to 22 ounces its covering is leather or composition goal or ring a goal or basket or basket 18 inches in Diameter suspended from a backboard at each end of the court. The metal rim of the basket is 10 feet above the floor. Shot clock. A shot clock is a countdown timer used in basketball that provides a set amount of time, 24 to 35 seconds depending on the league, that a team may possess the ball before attempting to score a field goal. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Alfred Ayanyades from BSC at 2 p.m. here to report about but the basketball equipment. Basketball jerseys. The jersey is important to a player's identity on the court. It includes your name on the back and numbers on both the front and back that identify who you are. On the front of a jersey is your team's logo and branding. Basketball shoes. Basketball shoes are the most essential piece of equipment although basketball can be played in regular sneakers. A good pair of shoes will give you edge on the court while providing extra safety. Basketball shorts. Another piece of essential equipment to your uniform are shorts. If you play indoors, you will stick with shorts since you will start sweating once you play. Basketball socks. Socks prevent friction between your feet and your shoes. Having a nice pair of socks will prevent blister from forming on your heels and toes. Headbands and wristbands. If you want to add a unique look to your personal style on the court, Try adding a headband or a wristband. Basketball shooting sleeves, also known as compression sleeves. This article of clothing not only looks good but it aids in muscle recovery on and off the court. Towels. If you sweat a lot, you'll want to bring a towel to the game. Whistles. If you're a coach or referee, you'll want a whistle. Referees may blow their whistles to signal a dead ball, a foul, a violation, or if a player steps out of the bonds. In practice,
coaches may blow their whistle to start off to st of stop start off stop or stop a drill give a command or just to gather the players 